Platform, Shai, your host. We're back um, for our first broadcast for the month of March. This month of March is miscellaneous uh, March. So we're bringing up various topics um, this month. And I apologize for the delayed start. We were having technical difficulties, so we appreciate your patience. And we have a special treat tonight. Tonight, we're talking about HIV and AIDS in the African-American community. We're talking about the truths, the lies, and dispelling the myths. And I have a special guest with us, um, Miss Darla Kemp. Miss Darla Kemp, you can go ahead and wave to the audience. Miss Darla Kemp, she is um, a founder of the nonprofit um, entitled Strive Women's Health and Wellness. Um, and so Darla, um, she is, uh, I, I have her here. She's a wonderful guest. She's very knowledgeable. And I want to be able to start with you introducing what your nonprofit is and what and what you do. Sure. Thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Darla Kemp. My nonprofit is called Strive Women's Health and Wellness. It's an acronym for, excuse me, I'm so sorry. It's an acronym for Sisters Taking Victory Over This Epidemic. Um, it is a around women being sexually conscious, um, African-American women, and being responsible for their sexual health. Okay, absolutely. And I know that you, um, how long have you had this, how long have you had the, um, the nonprofit Strive? Um, how long have you had it and what kind of work you've been doing with Strive? Sure. It's newly, actually, it was originally um, a, a, as you stated, a foundation recently transformed to a nonprofit. Um, I started this back in 2016. Um, it was very personal and dear to my heart. I did have three very close women friends that transitioned from the disease, and I didn't find out that they had the disease until they were on their deathbed until after that. So that kind of catapulted my knowledge and my awareness for me to kind of start something in their honor. And it recently started, I started the nonprofit. It became a nonprofit in November of 2020. Okay. And thank you for sharing that, um, Darla. And I think what's important is that I wanted to share just some statistics with, um, I don't know if you had some ready right at your fingertips, but I certainly do. I do. Okay, great. Thanks so if you don't mind sharing just some opening up with just some statistics and some data to share with our viewers. Sure. Um, well, the women, African-American women are the second largest population infected from HIV. Um, it kind of fluctuate from the LGBT community to women. Um, we are not being broadcast as, as much as affected, uh -huh. but we are definitely um, being affected in astronomical numbers. Um, it's not being talked about as much as it should be. Um, and and Women Empowerment Day today is a perfect opportunity to kind of express those views and get back to taking care of the African American woman um, regarding statistics. I do have some statistics regarding infection rates and things, um, how the percentage ups regarding mm -hmm. transmission. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this mm -hmm. ch chart here um, regarding transmission, oral, vaginal, anal, things like that. Um, the transmission is 40 times higher. If you can see this with the oral transmission, the vaginal receptive, is 400 times higher. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys can see this. And mm -hmm. the anal receptive transmission is 2,000 times higher regarding wow. statistics for African American women. Okay. Wow. Um, and thank you for sharing that, um, Darla. And I think what's important is that just to make sure that we're all on the same page for those viewers that are coming in. We're talking about HIV and AIDS and the African-American community. And we're speaking about the truth and the lies and dispelling the myths. And um, Darla is a founder of Strive, which was a nonprofit and is working to raise awareness and support women um, in, in preventing HIV and AIDS and those living with HIV and AIDS, getting them the support that they need. Um, but just for those tuning in, know that HIV can affect anyone, anyone, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of race, 
mm -hmm. ethnicity, gender, or age. So we, anyone joining us, we don't want, we're not trying to put misinformation out there because certainly it affects everyone across races, across cultures, men and women, heterosexuals, homosexuals, transgenders, and the like. Everyone is touched by this disease, not only in the United States, but around the world. So oh, I just want to um, it's, it's a global pandemic, really, um, epidemic of, um, of, of, of a disease. And so we want to make sure that we are make, cre making it clear on the, on the broadcast that it's not just affecting African-American women, but we're certainly, um, with our guests, is highlighting the, the, the negative effect that it's having um, and the prevalence that it's having among African-American women. And later on in the broadcast, we'll also... Um, share some other statistics uh, about um, uh, African Americans and prevalence in the in the homosexual transgender community as well. So, Darla, was there anything else you wanted to share in terms of statistics? I know you shared um, about women and, and the infection rates and the method um, of of how they're being transmitted. Mm -hmm. um, was there anything else? I didn't want to cut you off there. No, um, I didn't want to jump in front of you either, but they're seeing a alarming high rate in patients or um, people over 50. Um, mm -hmm. Grandmothers and, and grandfathers are now becoming con contracting the virus as well. So now there's alarming numbers with elder, well, not elderly, but older statistics as well. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. And just to kind of back up, and, and deal with HIV kind of broadly and bring it back into looking at specific groups. Um, let's first start with a basic question. What is HIV AIDS? Sure. HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus. That is HIV. And AIDS is a, I'm sorry, acquired immunodeficiency virus. Okay. And HIV AIDS is a, is a virus is, um, that... Uh, breaks down the immune system right. and those who live with the disease and without medication or intervention, that breakdown of the immune system will continue to the point where you don't have a functioning immune system well enough to um, protect you from Absolutely. the pathogens that we come in contact with all day, every day. So some germs that we come in contact for those who have a healthy immune system, you wouldn't think anything about it. You wouldn't even know. Um, you came in contact with it. For those who have HIV disease that have progressed to AIDS, um, acquired immunity deficiency syndrome, where their immune system is so compromised Correct. that they have literally no protection, they are um, vulnerable to opportunistic infections. And that okay. ultimately, these infections is what ultimately takes their lives. Um, okay. And so we wanted to make sure we explain that to our viewers um, about what HIV uh, disease is and what it can progress to. And so Darla, did you want to share with our viewers like, well, how do you get HIV and AIDS? How do you get this disease? Sure. Um, three ways of transmission. And I do have, um, I'm a visual learner as well. Um, so I do have a chart here. I don't know if you can see it. Can you guys yeah. see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is just a chart basically stating the three ways that you can um, get HIV. The first one is, I'm sorry, having unprotected sex. The next one is sharing needles. And the last one is transmission from mother to baby. Mm -hmm. And also, um, just to add to that, um, Darla, is that there, now that we're in more modern times, we're more uh, aware um, there are there were times when the disease first came on the scene in the 1980s and into even as much into the early 90s where we were still learning about the disease <laughs> that people who were getting blood transfusions um, sure. um, like hemophiliacs, they were um, a few of them were getting the disease through just blood transfusion and it was actually being transmitted. In fact, um, Ryan um, White, White is a um, was a hemophiliac um, who contracted HIV disease through blood transfusions, and um, this was in back in the early '90s. And so right. we were still learning a lot about the disease. Um, and so essentially, HIV disease is through um, blood 
as transmission and right. also um, sexually it can be transmitted. And just right. like Jala was saying, from mother to child mm -hmm. um, in childbirth and also through breastfeeding. So from mm -hmm. an HIV positive mother breastfeeding her child, um, the disease can also be transmitted to her infant. Correct. Um, um, so Darla, was there um, anything else you wanted to share about that? Um, yeah, just to give a little history, um, as you stated that back in the early 80s, this was called GRID. It was considered a gay-related immunodeficiency disease. Um, back in San Francisco, New York, um, they had a high gay population community, and they the doctors saw a lot of these viral young men coming to the hospital, um, and they couldn't diagnose it. So initially, they thought it was a gay-related disease because that's all that they saw. It was maybe 333, 336 cases, and then out of the 336 cases, 136 of the patients died. So the doctors kind of called from New York and they kind of um, spoke with each other. I'm like, hey, I got this gentleman. He came in, he was healthy. Eventually he passed um, and they came up with that term. But when someone heterosexual got the disease, they changed it into HIV, what was the human versus the gay related immune deficiency disease. So just a little history from the name. And, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's still a prevalent um, thought that Correct. HIV is a, a gay man's um, disease. Correct. And that's not true. No, that is not true. That, is further, that cannot be further from the truth. And so the main mode of transmission is heterosexual sex. Um, but it can also be transmitted, as we highlighted earlier, through IV drug use, um, you know, blood pro receiving blood products infected with HIV disease, which is okay. rare now these days, but there was a time it wasn't. Um, maternal child transmission, um, and of course, sexually and, and, and otherwise. So it's not a gay man's disease. However, um, you know, Darla, if you wanted to speak more to like the history of where it started, and where we are now and why that's still a myth that many people hold on to. Correct. I think the myth is still prevalent today because initially it started like in San Francisco and the freer LGBT states back then were New York, San Francisco. So a lot of the LGBT community migrated to those areas because there was no judgment there. So initially, mm -hmm. again, um, they thought it was a gay related disease because initially that's all they saw. So that came with the stigma until a heterosexual actually contracted the disease and they changed the name. Um, I think it, because it originated initially, they said it was a gay related disease. Um, it's totally false. The stigma, I believe is still prevalent. I believe not much has changed, unfortunately, with the stigma to the disease. Um, it's people think it's shameful, it's disgusting, it's a dirty disease um, because you can get it through sex. And I just think the stigma hasn't changed much, although the medication and we've progressed so much with HIV and medication, but the stigma has remained the same because initially when it came out of the commercials, it, it didn't do, it was just a scary disease. We weren't educated properly enough about the disease. Um, it was scary. We didn't know. And that stigma is still around. It hasn't changed much in my eyes, um, but hopefully the stigma can get away because it's stopping people from seeking treatment because of the stigma and the associated shame that comes with the diagnosis and the disease. Okay. And thanks for sharing that. And I want to share with our viewers um, just the some statistics based on data from 2018 that I retrieved from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which is a nationwide and world-renowned um, authority on infectious disease. And so what they share here is that new HIV diagnosis among adults and adolescents mm -hmm. in the U.S. by race and ethnicity, the highest was Black or African American followed by Hispanic or Latino, and then followed by whites. And mm -hmm. then the lowest amounts were around uh, of American Indians, Alaska Natives, Asians, and Pacific Islanders and Native mm -hmm. Hawaiians. 
um, and looking at now, not to confuse anybody, because we certainly wanted to start the broadcast, you know, being um, shown just speaking truthful information and dispelling those myths. So again, anyone can can be infected with HIV um, disease. It is not a gay man's disease. However, we do want to highlight that the prevalence, um, if you break down out of all the people who are living with and contracted disease, the prevalence in um, men who have sex with men is higher than it is with um, um, other transmission groups. And what's what's second to men who have sex with men are African American women. And so that's why Strive is is here and around um, and many other organizations um, mm -hmm. they're here to support the African American community. And so with that, we do have a responsibility um, not only as believers, as citizens, as members of the community, both people of color and of all races, to pay mm -hmm. attention um, to what's happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Dahl, if you want to have any comments on that. Um, I definitely think we do, do have a responsibility to the African American community because the African American community sometimes doesn't get the best health care, dealing so, with other health disparities, and um, just health education. Um, we don't get the best of that just to continue to educate and make people more knowledgeable because there are a lot of myths and miseducations and things like that that people don't know. I think if the people are educated and they are active in their health care, things like that, we can definitely prevent more um, people from catching the disease, um, but if you do catch it, it's, it's livable. You can definitely live with the disease. There's a lot of medication that has um, come along the way within the last 30 years, but if we can prevent someone from actually catching the disease, we can do that. I, I think it also starts with patient education, correct patient education. Yes, and you're right. And so Darla, what can people do um, to prevent um, getting HIV, what can they do? I think people need to be honest with themselves and their partner. I, I do think if you're in a relationship or a situationship or whatever type of thing that you're doing with a significant other, you need to have the talk prior to being in the bedroom. And you, you need to have that honest talk before then, because once you're there, it's, it's kind of hard to bring up that uncomfortable um, conversation. So I do think if you're planning on engaging with anyone to do your re do your research, do your um, due diligence and have a conversation with them. And not only you need to trust yourself and not put your 100% trust in someone else and actually go with the person, you guys can get tested together. Have make them show documentation, you know, have the uncomfortable conversation. I think that's definitely needed prior to engaging in a sexual um, relationship with someone, just being open, honest, and taking care of self, self preservation. Just make sure you take care of self first and do your due diligence with making sure that the other person is taking care of themselves as well, or you're making them step up and do the things that they need to do in order to be refused sexually. Mm -hmm. And no no sharing like drug needles and things like that. And actually, if you're pregnant, we do um, want promote women to get prenatal care. So that's very important for a mm -hmm. mom to get early prenatal care is early detection. When you first find out you're pregnant, you go to initial OB visit and they do a panel, which they test for all the STDs, HIV, everything. So that initial OB visit is very critical because if you do have the HIV, they can start the medication to treat the baby and the baby may not, the infant may not have the disease. So the early detection is critical for um, pregnant women. Um, absolutely. And I'm glad that you shared those things. And I think there were so many nuggets and what you, uh, what you shared. And again, our viewers, if you have any questions or comments we wanna hear from you, please chat in. Um, we certainly want um, to answer your questions and, and have you participate in this conversation. But some of the gold nuggets that stuck out for me um, 
um, Darla, you were saying the importance of having these conversations and slowing down to get to know your romantic interests. Because we're not ignoring the fact that, yes, HIV can be transmitted through IV drug use, sure. um, maternal child transmission, and rarely these days um, blood transfusions and things or needle sticks or anything like that. But the, the primary way that HIV disease is transmitted is through heterosexual sex, heterosexual sex, sexual right. activity. And so we have to think about this. And I feel like we oftentimes shy away from these conversations about sex and sexuality, about our health and having these conversations. When you are dating someone and you're considering them for marriage or something serious, um, right. you're, you should be having conversations about your health. Um, and your health includes not only chronic um, diseases. I mean, do you have diabetes or, you know, are you struggling with hypertension? But yeah. also, includes, do you have any sexually transmitted diseases? Absolutely. I need to know about because if you're planning your life, planning to spend your life with this person, um, you are going to have sexual intimacy. There may be children <laughs> involved. These are the things you need to know um, before you um, make long-term commitments. Absolutely. Um, well, and what, were you going to say something, Darla? I'm sorry. I yeah, know no, it's fine. Kind of also, you know, just, just to piggyback off that, just so legislation needs to be on one accord as well. Um, I don't know if the viewers know. In D.C., when you apply for a marriage license, they make you take an HIV test um, before they give you a marriage license, which is great. Unfortunately, Maryland does not or Virginia. So a lot of people because DC is a little more rigid with theirs, they will migrate to Maryland or Virginia to get the merge license. So a lot of people are starting their lives together without knowing the status of their future husband or their wife. So I do think legislation need, also needs to be on one accord with that. That should be a vital thing for if you're applying for a merge license, that should be something that should be known to both parties before beginning a life together. Absolutely. And we have a comment or a question from one of our viewers said, from my understanding, the death rate has gone down tremendously over the past 20 to 25 years due to better communication and medication. I'm sure. Praise God. Uh, <laughs> did you want to comment on uh, on that at all? Sure. Um, I w Is this Pamela? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call her name. But yes, um, the death rate has definitely gone down tremendously due to the medication, um, due to the advancements of the medication due to a lot of the clinics um, that are coming out that are non-judgmental, non-judgmental zones. So you're, you can have that conversation with the doctor and you can, you can go to these testing sites. And also they have rapid HIV tests. Now you don't have to wait the 20 minutes. You can, you can get the results in one minute. So medicine has come leaps and bounds and really has changed the outlook for an HIV diagnosis. So yes, I do agree. Um, but we, we still need to have these uncomfortable conversations prior to us, you know, engaging, but it definitely has tremendously turned around. I agree. We still have more to go, ways to go, but definitely has turned around a lot, in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so things have um, turned around, which I think is, is a good thing that things have turned around. But we have so much further to go. And just to kind of give you an idea, I recently attended a uh, webinar and it talked to, again about the same topic, um, HIV and AIDS in the black community. And what the speaker actually shared was that if, if you put together all of the African-American um, population in the United States who are HIV positive, we will be ranked six and we were our own country. We would mm -hmm. be ranked 16th in the world in terms of HIV disease um, prevalence, which is right behind Ghana. Um, so if, yeah. so to put some, you know, put it in perspective that Absolutely. we've drawn leaps and bounds that HIV does not have to be this automatic death sentence. People Correct. can live a long life and thrive with proper medical care um, and, and direction, but it is very much still a problem. And I think the, the stigma Mm -hmm. um, the taboo, the uncomfortableness of people mm -hmm. talking about their sex and sexuality, both okay. in the church and outside the church, 
um, mm -hmm. keep people in the dark and doing risky things. Um, and, and so I, you know, this is why the platform is, is bringing these things to our viewers so that you can, we're taking this out of this conversation, out of the dark, out of the tabloids, out of these um, areas where these conversations kind of come up or maybe they never come up. Um, and that's just hush hush and whisper and gossip, but we're bringing that out of the dark and into the light to say, you know, hey, this is real and it exists, right. and we need to be um aware. Um, because a lack of knowledge, my people perish, and so we need right. to be knowledgeable. And I also want to throw in because, um, I know, Darla, you mentioned about the laws, um, in DC and how you got yeah. when you apply for a marriage license, they require the um. <laughs> you know, the partners to get tested. And right. I think that's important. And I also want to use as a, as an opportunity to throw in a plug that these high profile cases that you hear about mm -hmm. someone knowingly being HIV positive mm -hmm. and they're going around infecting people, mm -hmm. um, those things do happen. And in places that's mm -hmm. considered even illegal, but mm -hmm. I don't want to dispel that myth. Most of the time, people who spread around a disease are the ones who don't know they have it. Correct. So I want to make sure we're dispelling that myth that it's not most of the time it's not the people who know that they have it that are spreading disease rampantly. It's those who do not know they have it. So I think that's important um, and speaks back to testing um, and screening. Dollar, did you want to share anything from your experience about testing yeah. and screening? Um, and again, that's the early detection, again, is, is key. And just a little nugget as well, a lot of people are unaware that the HIV test is something that you have to ask for. A lot of um, people think that when you go to your doctor and get the annual test, that it automatically comes with your lab work. But you have to specifically ask for an HIV test, which I think it should just automatically be an annual test. It should come with your lab work. But if you don't ask for it, then they won't give it to you. Um, and a lot of people thought that they were healthy because like, oh, I went to the doctor, I got my labs done, I didn't have anything, not knowing that that's a specific test you have to ask for. So again, hopefully that can be something that can be added with the annual test because that's something very important, mm -hmm. but that is a test that you have to ask for. And now they have a fourth generation HIV test. Um, before they were using for a rapid was a third generation HIV test, which tests for the antibodies, the HIV virus one and the HIV virus two. Now they have a test, excuse me, it's the fourth generation test. It's called the Allier testing. I don't know if you can see your HIV mm -hmm. Combo, this is the actual test that when you go to your doctor, it's the fourth generation test where they take the blood. This is the actual test in the INSTI kit. So this mm -hmm. test tests for the antigen, which is the first part of the virus, the antibodies, HIV-1, HIV-2, where that's the fourth generation. So this test here can get an early detection. Normally it would be a 90 day window that you would have to wait to get an HIV test. This will catch an early infection in approximately three weeks after an exposure. So this test is very good. Um, it's a rapid test. It takes approximately 20 minutes for you to get your results. And I have a demo. I'm sorry, guys. Give me one moment. Take your time. This is great. I'm so glad you're sharing this with us. Sure. Okay. So this is a... It's a normal finger stick. I'm sorry, I can't. Okay, it's a finger stick. So this this kind of show you. Oh, sorry, wrong side. Ah, can't see. Okay, <laughs> it's backwards. I'm so sorry. Know, guys, it's but it, it shows you. <laughs> um, it's a finger stick like a diabetes stick where you would do um just the inject. Not, I'm sorry, just a prick here, and they will get your blood with a pipette. And once they get the blood, they will put it on a on the strip here. I'm so sorry, this is backwards. And you can see the results, a reactive test, a non-reactive is a negative test, and an invalid test. So this will show you the AG is for the antigens and the antibody. So if you take this test and 
the line comes up in antigen, that's the early detection test, meaning the infection was recent. If it comes up in the antibody test, it was a later infection. Um, so you may have had it for a while, but this is a great tool. Um, so if we can get this done, then we could protect any partners that you've had and get you on medication early versus the 90 day window. Mm -hmm. um, also, thanks for sharing that, um, Darla. Also, can are you able to share with our viewers where they can get tested um, if they maybe they've you know engaged in um, sexual activity um, and it, they weren't expecting it it happened it's potentially been exposed they didn't know the person that well um, whatever the scenario is that brings you to the point where can they go or what can they do to get tested sure they have a couple of options um you can actually go to get tested at your doctor um of course that will be a wait so if you want an instant test you can go to ahf you can go to whitman walker you can go to us helping us these are all local dc has a lot of resources for you to go and get instant test and also when you go to your doctor you can get a it's called PEP, I'm sorry, post-exposure. Yes, it's called PEP. It's, it's post-exposure prophylactic. And this is a pill that if you take within 72 hours, it's the same pill that's been around um, when we had rape victims, they would urge patients to go to the doctor, go to the doctor, don't take a shot, go to the doctor so they can give you this pill. So if you take the pill within 72 hours, it will lessen your chances of the transmission of HIV. And this is also the same pill that you would take if you work in a healthcare setting and you got a finger prick, they will give you, um, excuse me, the same pill, <clears throat> excuse me, and monitor you and have you come back and, and get tested just to make sure no transmission has been done. But you can always go to your physician, your private physician, or you can go to your local testing centers. They're all around DC. AHF is a, a big one. Whitman Walker Clinic is a huge one as well. Us helping us. They, they're all over the DC metropolitan and Maryland area. And, and thanks for sharing that. Um, and I think it's so important that we not um, dismiss um, the, the importance of your health and right. staying knowledgeable and visiting your primary care provider at least annually right. um, to get blood testing, not only just to screen for any sexually transmitted diseases, but also just to have awareness of your overall health. How's right. your you know, blood sugar doing? How are your lipids? How are your, um, what's your blood pressure look like? I mean, these things, um, need to be checked. And so it's same as with um, in looking at infectious disease and specifically we're talking about HIV and AIDS tonight. Um, but it's very important that we take those steps to do that um, and, and to be knowledgeable about what's happening with your body and be able to bring that information and be in a place of strength um, to say, you know, your status um, and if you're in a, you're thinking about considering a lifelong commitment, um, where, you know, uh, in your planning for these, you, these are things you can share, um, right. with, um, with them say, Hey, you know, I've been tested. These are the dates. Um, you know, if you, you know, more, com if, you know, this was six months ago, we can also go together and right. test together and you, and you really need to be able to navigate these. Um, right. and I don't want any of our viewers feeling like, Oh, well, you know, we're Christians. We don't do that. Uh, <laughs> that's a conversation for another topic, and we another day where we will dispel those myths. We know what the Word of God says, but we also know sex is happening um, inside and outside the church, and so we need Absolutely. to be real about these things and and really think about what we're doing and the decisions that we're making. And so, um, so the viewers out there, put on your um, your grown up man and woman panties and and under and underwears and step out. And, um, and and confront this truth and right. to um, and do that. And so I wanted to you know, toss it back to our audience. Of course, if our 
audience wants to chat in, you have any comments, we're open to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We want to answer your questions. We want you to join this discussion. Anyone who's just now joining us, again, this is the platform, and we're talking about HIV and AIDS in the African-American community. We are dispelling the myths. We're exposing the lies and speaking about the truth, and we have our special guest here, um, Darla Kemp, who is the um, founder of a nonprofit ag agency um, called Strive. And so we're, we're here with her and we're having a very frank conversation about this um, so that we can be um, knowledgeable and make better decisions um, and, and support health. So in general, in, in your thoughts, um, Darla, what, how, what do you think the HIV AIDS epidemic is doing to the African-American community? What do you think it's doing in your opinion? I think it's ravishing the African-American community. I think it has always ravished the African-American community um, just due to not having the, the proper education, just just not discussing it anymore. Um, I know back in the 80s, there were posters, there were billboards everywhere, and, and it kind of scared some people straight, but now it's, it's, people don't talk about it anymore. They, it's, it's the, like you said, the taboo topic. Um, so it's kind of swept underneath the rug, but it's just doing African-American community such an injustice because our rates are alarming and we're leaving children without parents and, and children to cope for themselves and things like that. Um, so the African-American, I'm sorry, African-American community are already plagued with so many other health disparities, um, low income, th things of the that nature that have been prevalent for forever with the African American community. So with the HIV and the AIDS, um, this this is another thing that we we have to combat. But I think with knowledge and using our voices and this this platform is is a wonderful thing just to start back mm -hmm. talking about it because we a lot of children people don't talk about the children whose parents are deceased or have have to deal with this disease, how it affects the family overall, the support for the family, the mental welfare of the child as well. And also the person that is living with HIV that hasn't come to terms with their diagnosis, that, that needs mental help and things like that. Um, I think if you're worried about these other avenues, like somewhere to stay and your mental health and things like that, you won't be taking your medication and things on a regular. So once we get those things stable and then we can kind of focus on the healthcare because if that is not right, everything else is not going to be correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and just as like you were saying, steps like this, these small steps make an impact um, in our community and what we're doing just by raising awareness and talking about it. Um, because there's so much shame, there's so much, uh, myths out there. Um, there are many people who still believe they can get HIV um, disease from casual contact, from sharing dishes with someone who might be HIV positive, um, giving them a hug, holding hands. Um, these are very basic things. And in the medical community, we kind of take for granted mm -hmm. how many people still believe that. Um, and this, and that's not true. It's not true. Right. So that's another myth that we're busting up tonight. Um, it's not um, transmitted through casual contact. So Correct. getting someone who's HIV positive a hug, you all um, sharing the same dish, those things are not going, you're not going to get it from a toilet, um, things like that. And so we want to make sure we throw that out there. And so we want to stop perpetuating um, these myths and these lies because they keep myths and lies, keep people bound um, and people don't make per, um, better choices. And it, um, you know, perpetuates shame and guilt and isolation and division. And those things are, are, are not of God. And so we want to make sure that we are protecting and loving on the folks that are in our lives. If you're living with the disease, that you're also feeling loved and supported and, and protected from not only the medical community, your, your family, if at all possible, um, your social circles in the church um, where we can be a, be a safe place. And so now that I've uh, mentioned that, um, Darla, what do you think the um, community can do, the church or the community? I know you've been pretty active. You created your own um, nonprofit in, in addressing this, but do you think any, what, uh, what can the church do? What can anyone else or the community members do to combat this epidemic? 
Um, I can answer that in two parts. Um, the community can continue to talk about it, continue to do the foot traffic to go um, to, and test. Um, I did start a program back in 2015, 16, it's called Love Thy Neighbor, um, which I will go to different neighborhoods, primarily in DC, War 6, 7, and 8, and do HIV testing in the, the client's home. Those who didn't want to go out, those that were ashamed to go out, those who were scared to go out, I would go into their homes and do the HIV testing. If I got any positive results, I would get them linkage to care services and get them appointments for them to follow up with an infectious disease doctor. But that that's something that the community can do um, is again, love on each other and hold the kind of hold these city officials accountable because this is something that is ravishing the African-American community. And regarding the church, I really believe um, a no judgment free zone. I mean, I, I know that ideally sex before marriage is the, you know, you're not supposed to do ideally, but it is happening. So just meeting people where they are in, in a church community and no judgment, because I think a lot of people, if they had that level of comfortability and transparency, that people would come to the church and maybe have a testing event at the church and get the youth involved. I think the youth is the key. Once they're involved and they're knowledgeable and they know that they, they, once they learn something, they'll they'll spread the word. So I do think getting the youth involved in the no judgment zone would be ideal for the church. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that. And thank you for sharing that. And I wanted to put up that we have a viewer that chatted in a question. Um, and the question is, do you think the improvement in treatment may also maybe also contributing to more sexual activity and transmission, or is this a myth? So it's a great question. Um, you want to chime in on that, Darla? Sure. I, I do think some of um, Magic Johnson made a statement about him coming out in 1992, and he felt like that was a gift and a curse because people look at his situation and they think like that will be their end result. So they're, they're not as careful. I'm sorry. They're not as careful as they would normally be. So he kind of feels, he feels great about coming out, but he feel bad about the image that they portrayed. So a lot of African American, just people in general, because they they weren't taking it as seriously as he thought they should. And I do think because with the, the drugs that has come um, along um, and not being properly educated as well, that the seriousness of it is not as prevalent as it was back then. So yes, with the, the new drugs and things like that, I, I do believe at some point that that is a factor. I do agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and thanks for sharing that, Darla. And I think it's important that we also look at because um, I think it was a very great question, and I think there are a lot of complexities to that question. Let me put it up again. I think there are a lot of complexities in it because if I think the easier way to answer that is looking at, okay, so does along those lines, so does legalizing marijuana make more people want to use it? Um, do we have, you know, we have advanced in medication and drugs for diabetes. Does that make people want to sit around and, and, and still have a sedentary lifestyle and still eat, eat crazy and, and do these things that may increase their risk for having diabetes because now oh, we got better medications, you can right. live long with that. And I think you can kind of raise that up about anything um, really um, and, and throwing that out there. But I think it's important that we not use that as a, um, let me just say, not an excuse, but a, a crutch. <laughs> Um, because we don't, we want, we celebrate the advance, advances in modern medicine. Um, God bless us with a, in a beautiful mind. And there are people who have, um, you know, very intelligent, have researched and studied and came up with treatments. And I also believe there's a cure out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and hopefully we, we'll get a chance to, to see it in our lifetime mass produce. And this will be a conversation of the past. Mm -hmm. um, but until that happens, I think we can um, encourage people to get be knowledgeable, um, to take a proactive role in their health, um, and don't use the fact, um, don't misuse the information, don't abuse the information to promote um, lasciviousness, to promote risky behavior, 
Right. Um, and I really feel like, you know, people, you know, it's it's like, hey, I, I, now that we have seatbelts in all the cars, should we drive faster? <laughs> Should we drive fast? We take more risks. And I think, yeah, I think that's a reality. I think mm -hmm. when people feel a little comfort or feel like there's a little bit of a safety net, they may be a little bit more willing to push the limits, but I don't think we should stop there and dwell there, but rather look at it from the angle of like, well, what can we do not to go over the cliff? <laughs> what can we do to, um, to prevent that and to educate ourselves um, and celebrate healthier ways of doing relationships um, so that we're not increasing our risk of um, of transmitting diseases um, amongst each other, mm -hmm. uh, and, and using that uh, and approaching it from that angle. Um, sure. And for those who who do have the disease, who are living with HIV, um, or they just found out, oh, I, mm -hmm. I just found out I got this disease, Darla, what do you think they should do? What What are their next steps? I definitely think they should find, um, seek treatment um, from a medical professional because the sooner that you get in care, we can, you know, start treatment and that'll be better for you. That'll be better for any um, partner that you may have and also a support system. Um, someone, it doesn't have to be a lot of people that you tell, but maybe someone that you can confide in it doesn't have to be a family member. It can be a linkage person. It, it may be your doctor, but just someone that you can speak with and have those in-depth conversations with because you don't want someone to hold that in or, or feel ashamed and they can't tell anyone um, about the diagnosis. So you definitely want to support person. It doesn't have to be a friend. It doesn't because you may not be at that point where you're really ready to disclose, disclose. I'm sorry. So when you're ready to disclose, just make sure there's someone that you're comfortable with and you can have a transparent conversation about how you're really feeling. There are support groups um, that people can go to. Um, there are anonymous hotlines that you can call. There, there are all types of resources that will kind of help a person with a um, diagnosis or, um, yeah, a diagnosis. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and here on the, on, on the platform, we don't shy away from, um, you know, our, uh, the power of God and mm -hmm. faith healing. And I certainly, and I know that I'm throwing a bomb out there and, uh, it, and it may be controversial depending on who you're speaking to, but certainly, um, I, you know, we believe in the power of God. We believe in healing, um, but we certainly are not saying that, you know, by seeking medicine, modern medicine, getting treatment is somehow anti-God or you don't believe God can, because God uses medicine too. He uses people um, to, to heal. Um, and so those who, you know, are out there that are listening, we certainly believe in the power of God and the healing power of God. And we will encourage you to seek help from the medical community if you test positive um, to get the medications that you need, but also buttress that and support it with, with, with prayer and mm -hmm. faith um, and support and love and let that healing love be a balm to your soul as mm -hmm. you walk through this um, and go through this um, and learn to go from surviving to thriving with HIV disease. And you can fill in the blank with any disease for that matter. Right. Um, I think, and so we're, we're, we're not here to judge. We're not here to say, you know, what's wrong with these people because it could be any of us. Mm -hmm. It can be any of us. Anything can happen. You thought, some, you know, it really could be any any of us. People mm -hmm. getting disease inside marriage and outside of marriage. Okay, right. um, you know, on drugs and not on drugs. Um, so and it kills on and on. And so you never know. And I think what's in what's so important is what we're doing is to you know to to illuminate your your mind through the truth, um, mm -hmm. and and first kick down those doors of shame and ignorance um, because that's keeping the community bound. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of misperceptions floating around out there. There's a lot of, um, uh, it, which is an, a later broadcast, but mistrust in the medical community. And Correct. I feel like, you know, it, you know as, as, as African-Americans, 
you know, to be honest, in America, we have good reason not yeah. to mistrust, to, to not to trust the medical community. So we have a lot of barriers we're trying to clear, a lot of hurdles we're trying to clear. Um, but this is just a start. And this is just a start. Um, Dolly, you have anything you want to say to that? Um, no, that was a, a great point regarding being staying in prayer and keeping your faith through just anything in general, not just this. And again, if you're newly diagnosed, you're not alone. Um, and there are a lot of resources that can mm -hmm. assist you um, with anything that you, you may need. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if anyone wanted to be involved in your nonprofit, you know, hey, I want to support your cause, what you're doing, support the women, um, you know, or maybe there are other, um, com you know, groups that are around that supporting um, men and women and children living with the disease. What can they do? Sure. They can contact me directly. Uh, my direct number is 202-352-1313, or they can email me directly. Uh, my email address is Darla. T is in Tom dot Kemp at yahoo.com. Um, I do a lot of community outreach. I do a lot well with COVID. Of course, it has slowed down everything. But when the world was open, I did a lot of speaking engagements at um, Covenant House, a homeless shelter for the youth. I did a lot of speaking engagements at schools, um, anywhere that I can speak just to kind of get the awareness out there. Okay, and I want to make sure that I'm providing that information um, for the viewers. So I want to make sure I'm getting this right. Um, hold on just for a second. Let's see. No problem. So I want to make sure I'm getting it right because it came out kind of fast. <laughs> so I want to get put that out there. Put your email. Um, and, and thank you so much for sharing no that. Problem. Put that out there so those who of um, viewing can see and they yes. can certainly email you if they want to get involved. And then we have another question from a viewer. Um, and so I want to put that out there as well. So for those who are viewing, please make note of that email address is out there for you to view. Please email her if you want to get involved. I'm um, sure she would love it. I'm sure she would love it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, also, here we have a, a, um, a viewer said, as a pastor, I believe the church is the right place for this conversation. Jesus came to those who were sick. Amen. Any any thoughts on that um, comment, Dala? No, straight to the point. I do believe that that will be a great place to start. Absolutely. I, I definitely believe. Start, keep, and continue. Yep, I do. Absolutely, because the reality is people are dying in shame. Yeah. They won't tell anybody. Um, they're getting sick. They're not going to the yeah. doctor. They don't know why. Or maybe they have been to the doctor and got the news and they're in denial. Correct. Um, they're so terrified of letting their family know, letting their friends know, their church members know, because I don't want to be judged as mm -hmm. the dirty person or something's wrong with me. And they, they allow themselves to get sicker and sicker until it could eventually kill them. And um, and in the process, they can be transmitted to other people. Um, and so we want to not have that continue. Correct. Um, and want to be able to um, be able to say, no, we're, we're not doing that. We're, we're coming out. We're breaking down those doors of shame. And we're, we're opening up those doors and say, hey, you know, we're not here to say, you know, you're unworthy of love and forgiveness and treatment and healing because this happened to you, whether you are willing participant or not, um, because, you know, things can happen bountifully against you that you didn't ask for or Correct. didn't want or didn't put, you know, and so there are a lot, not all stories are created equal. And there's so many different things that why that or paths where people end up that lead to where they are now. Mm -hmm. And you certainly can't put people in a box. Um, and I wanted to share with our viewers just a, a couple of photos that you shared, darling, oh. with me. Well, your nonprofits. <laughs> I want to make sure I do this justice <laughs> and, and share it with everyone so everyone sure. can see it. Um, and let me know if you can see it too. Do you see it on your? You see it? Let's see. Give me just a second. Sure. There we go. There we go. You see it? 
Yeah, I was at children. Those quilts are actually, they were made by some children at mm -hmm. Children's National Medical Center, Children's Hospital in DC for, for HIV. So each quilt has a personal message to someone who either passed from HIV or a family member. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm so glad you shared that. And I think, and you and Dollar, you're looking fly right there. Look at that nonprofit. <laughs> Uh, extraordinaire, she looking real fly right there. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, looking real fly. Oh, and I, and I certainly want to share that with our viewers because, um, you know, just to show that you're you're in this, you're in this Absolutely. fight, you're in it, you invested yourself, um, into this, um, yeah. and no and outside resources financially. Everything absolutely. that I've done has been out of pocket for myself. No, no mm -hmm. backers, no anything. So everything I've used my own resources to fund this. Absolutely. Oh, wow. definitely commit. Yes. Wow. Wow. And so I certainly want to, you know, honor you and, <laughs> and thank you for your commitment to, um, women, um, to people living with HIV and um, AIDS, um, and that you're willing to um, not just talk about it, but be about it and wrap your arms around those who are sick um, and, and to help because it takes quite a bit um, to walk through through life with someone who's suffering, yeah. whether it be spiritual suffering, um, uh, emotional suffering, or physical suffering. It takes a special um, love um, in your soul to do that. And so for you walking beside these women um, and, and helping them and, and standing for justice and standing for truth, I salute you and I honor you yeah. for that. And, I, and I, yes, and for those out there, um, pastors, clergy members out there walking hand in hand with those who are suffering spiritually and you up all night taking calls in the middle of the night out there trying to love on people, praying, I salute you as well. Um, those counselors who are out there who are working with the emotionally unwell, yeah. they're emotionally sick, they're mentally sick, and they're out there spending those days, hours, times, all hours of the night, in during the day, seeing them in, in counseling offices, yeah. um, supporting people. I salute you. And so these caring um, positions, um, are, it's a lot. It's a whole yeah. lot. It's a whole lot to walk through. And I, and I thank God for you. Um, and your heart for people um, and, and this opportunity. And I, and I hope our viewers are being blessed. Um, I have been blessed by this conversation. This is by no means a, um, a, end, a end to this conversation. There's so much information. There's so much more ground to cover. And I think we can have a part two. I don't know about you, but I think we can certainly have a part two. Because I'm for I it. Love, <laughs> absolutely. Because I would love to be able to have those who are living with HIV or AIDS um, and be able to come and speak their truth and speak Absolutely. their experience. Um, because I think it's important. There's no one that can quite speak about experience except for someone who's lived it. Absolutely. Um, and so even in, I'm a, a medical professional, but on a lot of ways, on some things, I'm on the outside looking in. If I'm right. not living right. with it, um, there's only so much I can say or do to it or speak to that. Um, and so our viewer chatting in great information and, um, and mm -hmm. I hope everyone was blessed. I hope everyone was blessed by this. Um, any final, um, thoughts, Darla at all? Um, well, I just want to thank you for having me on this platform. Um, again, for me being able to speak, um, to additional viewers, um, because of COVID, I haven't been able to get out and kind of do my footwork that I normally do. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm going to continue to thrive and be guided and do what I need to do to end this epidemic. Um, that's what the acronym is for, Sisters Taking Victory in This Epidemic. And that's what I plan to do, just to continue to thrive and push forward no matter what the circumstances are that that's my goal and that's my mission but thank you for having me absolutely you're very welcome you're very welcome and um to all of your viewers be blessed to be a blessing take this information digest it go to credible websites the center for disease control and prevention cdc.gov um look it up um there's a wealth of information it's probably overwhelming the amount of information that's there um go to the website check it out, read about it, 
Um, challenge yourself to think outside the box. Challenge yourself to um, think about, well, what myths, what misinformation am I believing and perpetuating? I want you to challenge yourself um, and think after, and think outside the box um, and think how you can help uh, men, women living with HIV disease and embrace um, people um, uh, from all walks of life. Um, however they feel that find themselves or life has taken them, that you be able to embrace them. That is the love of Christ. If you have gifts that shake the rafters, but you have not love in your heart, you're a liar. There's no love in you. And so that's not, we're, we're, we're about love, um, not just about gifts and wonderful talents. We're about love here on the platform. And so I thank Dollar again for being of part of this. Thank I thank you. my viewers for tuning in. Uh, March is miscellaneous month. We're bringing all kinds of um, miscellaneous topics up. And so I think we might have a part two to this looming. Um, please like, subscribe, share to the Prayer Tower Church uh, channel, YouTube channel, um, also Facebook. Um, and as well, as you can always visit our um, the Prayer Tower Church website, um, prayertowerchurch.org um, forward slash live to tune in to any of our broadcasts. Thank you again for tuning in. Be blessed to be a blessing until we meet again. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Yay.